What is good, everybody, man? Welcome into the Blue Bloods, the coach's corner, as always, myself, my guy, Coach Fred, and we have an extremely special guest today, a guy who has been one of the most accomplished defensive coordinators in the FCS, helped Mercer make the first appearance in the FCS playoffs in school history last year, and is now the new head coach at West Georgia, who is making the transition to the UAC at the FCS level. We got head coach Joel Taylor. Coach, appreciate you joining the show, man. Hey, appreciate you having me, man. And that was a hell of a dang on intro. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I that you were we me and coach were talking about guests we wanted on the show, and you were one of the first names that came up because we obviously with coach coaching at Alcorn State, one of our big listening bases is HBCU uh centered, and you got to play at South Carolina State as a player. You got to coach there as a coach. And just recently, before we get into West Georgia, your journey, talk a little bit about how a kid from Brooklyn, New York, found his way to Orangeburg, South Carolina, and ended up getting to play under arguably one of the most accomplished head coaches in HBC football history and coach Buddy Pugh. Hey, two of them. I played under Willie Jeffries as well. So, uh, but... But yeah, um, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Uh, we moved when I was like seven years old. Uh, my mom moved us down to her hometown, which is Columbia, South Carolina. Um, uh, single parent home. I went through a lot of, you know, some knuckleheadness for myself, uh, but got through high school and uh, was fortunate enough uh, to get a scholarship to go to South Carolina State University. Um, probably one of the best decisions I ever made in my life. Um, and they saved my life, honestly. Um, got a chance to then go play a little bit of football. Uh, I was team captain the last two years. We actually won uh, the uh, the title, the MEAC title, and I think it was the first time we did it in like 10 years. So that was a big deal. Um, kind of didn't know what I wanted to do after college. I didn't know. Um, I, I graduated with a computer science degree, and I said, man, I don't want to work in no cubicle. You know, uh, you know, working in a cubicle, doing C++, Java language, stuff like that, I wasn't in on that. I, I was like, I'm good, you know. Uh, fortunately, um, Coach Buddy Pugh, and he said, hey, man, hey, why don't you come work for me? I said, oh, Coach, that sounds good, man. The next thing come out of his mouth is, I can't pay you. I said, what? Come, <laughs> come on, man. Come on, man. Uh, but uh, so I started out as a volunteer assistant, and uh, I actually started out in the video room. Okay, so I was, you know, helping out and assisting in the video room. Um, I'll find my time, you know, I'll find some time to go into the, the meetings with the coaches and just learning, man, being a fly on the wall. Uh, the next year, the, the offensive GA spot that came open, and uh, it was awesome, man. I was a defensive guy, played safety, um, and, uh, you know, it was awesome to see a uh, different side of the ball. I was actually working with the offensive line, which was awesome. Uh, and during that time, man, we had some really good ball coaches there as well. Uh, we had Coach Billy Napier uh, was offensive coordinator at the time. Uh, we had Coach Tony Elliott which was the uh, tight ends coach at the time. And he's a head coach at Virginia now. So I uh, was under some really, really good men, really good coaches um, to start out, man. So I was extremely lucky. Um, and not and not, and not only, you know, I was, you know, under Coach Buddy Pugh, you know, as a player. And like I said, I, you know, Coach, coach Jeffries for one year. So I, I got a chance to be around a lot of good guys, man. And uh, um, so, I, I, you know, after my GA year, um, I moved over to the defensive side of the ball. Uh, where I was more comfortable and uh, just kind of worked my way up uh, to restricted earnings. Um, so I was making about 10 grand somewhere around there, not making no money. Uh, but um, in 2009, my position had got cut. So when it had got cut, that was a, that was an economic crisis and uh, it got cut. And uh, so I'm looking for a job, you know, it was about three or four months. I'm without a job. I'm like, man, like, is this for me? Like, God, dog, like, you know, trying try to find a job is a full time job. You know what I mean? <laughs> And uh, and uh, uh, fortunately enough, man, I got a call from Fred Goldsmith. Okay, another legend. Okay, Fred Goldsmith was the ACC coach of the year at Duke. Uh, he was at Lenore Ryan at the time, and uh, he interviewed me. I got the job, uh, so it was my first technically full time job. But I was really, you know, it was really restricted earnings. But I was part time paid, so I was making fourteen nine nine five. So, you know, for the first five six years of my con uh, my, my 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 coaching career, I didn't make over fourteen nine nine five. You know. Uh, so, but going up there, man, it's probably, uh, you know, you know, God works in mysterious ways, man. It was the perfect timing for me. Uh, I was only there for one season, man, but the impact that I thought I made on that team and the people made on me was tremendous, man. Like tremendous. Um, uh, that's why I met, you know, coach Mike Houston, 
uh, that's at, you know, East Carolina now. Um, you know, Blake Harrell, uh, Roy Tej, man, we, I mean, them some ball coaches now, like some ball coaches. And uh, so I leave there and I get the secondary job at South Carolina State. So I come back to South Carolina State, right? And you can't tell me nothing, coach. Hey, <laughs> coach told me I was going to make 55 grand. Boy, I'm getting ready to blow it. I'm getting ballin'. ready to hey, balling. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, hey, and a week later, I met my wife. <laughs> <laughs> So I ain't gonna spend no money, man. No money. Uh, 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 so uh, I go back to South Carolina State, man. Had some really good years, man. Got a chance to be around some really good players: uh, Darius Leonard, Javon Hargrave, um, you know, uh, Christian Thompson. Like the, it, it was endless, man. We had a whole slew of guys went to NFL. It was awesome. It really was. Um, uh, but in 2014, Mike Houston gets a job at Citadel. So. You know, Mike called me, asked me, you know, hey, man, would you like to come down? And I said, you know what? Yeah. You know, I want to get outside my comfort zone. Um, you know, Citadel's a military school. You know, you know, can, can, can you go down there and win? Can you coach, win, recruit? Can you do those type of things? Um, so we went down there, man, and we were god off for the first year. god off. Okay. And um, uh, uh, we were really bad on defense. So what we did was we, we went back to the drawing board and we kind of dang on, changed some things up and reinvented ourselves and reinvented the defense. Um, the next year, we mess around <clears throat> and go nine and four. We beat South Carolina, get into the playoffs, win the championship, uh, beat Coastal Carolina in the playoffs. You know, at the Citadel, the military school, man, that's unheard of, right? We come back the next year, okay? Uh, we go 10 and two, you know, win the championship again. Um, we, were, we were top 10 in a lot of different categories defensively, you know? so. Uh, we knew we had something good there. Um, uh, so I was there for about three more years. Uh, and then I had that itch, man. You know, I wanted to, you know, see if I can do it on my own. And, uh, man, I tell you what, man, God works in mysterious ways, man. Um, I got a call from Coach uh, Drew Chronic. You know, I was inquiring about the job. And Coach Coach ain't know me from a can of paint. He ain't know nothing about me. And um, me and him hit it off, man, the first time I talked to him. He's a great man. And he gave me an opportunity to be the defensive coordinator there. And uh, we got, so I go on Laura Ryan. We go 13 and 1, um, top 10 in a lot of different categories uh, defensively. Um, and then Drew gets a job at Mercer. And we come to a Mercer team that kind of <clears throat> wasn't doing well over the last couple of years. And we had to, we had to go in there and change that thing. And, you know, we, we actually, uh, the, 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 the year before we got there, they were 117th in total defense. Uh, I think the next year we went 22nd, you know, so like that just goes to show like, you know, the kids buying in. We had some really good coaches, um, you know, we, we we built a foundation there. And then, you know, last year, you know, we were able to kind of break through, uh, win a playoff game. Um, and uh, and, you know, with all that hard work and um, gave me the opportunity to come here to West Georgia. One of my, um, you know, I, I've had a, I had a, a few Mercer guys on the show, but one of my favorite guys to talk to is Lance, man. That, that's my guy. I I, <laughs> yeah. I I love Lance, man. His energy is unmatched. And I, I know you saw that on the field. And and Coach's favorite player is a wide receiver guy. He man, he, he will he will bang the table for Ty James. And he said, oh, if man. you don't get a shot in the league, something's wrong, something's wrong. with the league. Something's ain't no, ain't wrong. No doubt. Ain't no doubt. Both great kids, man. And what's crazy about Lance, man? His journey is just so amazing. Um, just to be undersized, you know, when we first got there, Lance wouldn't hit nobody, you know, and all of a sudden, man, I, I tell you, man, he wouldn't hit nobody. And, you know, this is when we played the COVID season. So we played three games and we played, uh, army and we played Jacksonville state. And also we played that third game. That joker was running the alley. I said, who is that coach? <laughs> who is that? And, uh, he had 21 tackles that game. And after that, man, he just had that confidence, man. And, he just he just played with a lot of confidence, a lot of energy, and super smart, man. You know, we couldn't do the things we've done, you know, without Lance, man. He was awesome. And Ty James, man, he's another one, man. He he he's a baller, man. He is a good player, good kid. Um, I, I hope he gets a shot at the league. He deserves it. Um, you know, shoot. I mean, I, I haven't seen that kid catch 300, you know, yards in a game, you know, twice. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? It's like it's Monster. like man. Yeah, yeah. So that kid, FCS, FBS, D2, don't matter. Like that kid can play. No. NFL, he can play. I agree. Before I toss it over to coach, I always like to ask new head coaches, what it what was it about West Georgia 
that sold you on the vision and that this was the opportunity for you to start your head coaching career? Like what was the pitch from the athletic director? Was it that was it the facilities? Was it the vision that you had for this program? What was it about West Georgia coach? Well, I, I, I'll tell you, man. Um, first off, I didn't know much about West Georgia before, you know, they, they called me. The only thing I knew they were D2. They won some games um and they had you know solid facilities for a d2 program so you know i uh come up on a sunday it's actually right after the Gardner web game okay and i come up and my wife she, she she was fortunate enough to drive me up okay because you know i had a long, had a long day you know and, and uh, i had to, I had to try to get prepared uh so she drives me up and you know we're coming through Carrollton. And I don't know what road we took. It wasn't a good road. I ain't going to lie to you. It wasn't a good road. I was like, man, what is going on, right? That's my wife, you know. So we get here, man, and I get a chance to meet the president. I get a chance to meet the AD, right? So it's the first time I'm meeting him in person. I met the AD off our Zoom call. And uh, we're going through it. They asked me questions. And uh, the, the president asked me one question. He said, hey, coach, hey, why do you think you, you know, want to be the head coach at West Georgia, right? And we had – we had the interview in the press box and I turned around. I said, Hey coach, I said, uh, I said, uh, Dr. Kelly, I said, do you see what I see? Right. He said, he said, what you mean? I said, you probably see this for what it is, but I can see it for what it can become. So once I said that, he kind of rose up a little bit. Right. <laughs> All right. And he started dang on talking about his vision. Okay. And his vision is he wants to make West Georgia, uh, footprint larger, right? This, there's no different, you know, I tell everybody, there's not like West Georgia used to play UCF and USF when they were D2s, yeah. right? But their presidents had a great vision of getting them out. And now you're talking about the end of what, the Big 12? You got the other one in, you know, the, uh, the uh, American Conference. So West Georgia is strategically placed in a really good spot. The city, the city of Carrollton, freaking excellent awesome right you got everything that you need but you got a small town community feel you know uh you got football around here you got Carrollton high central Carrollton went 13 and one you got Bowden just won two state championships uh, you got all these teams around here it's a football town okay and then hey man hey, if you want them guys that want a little bit of something more Atlanta's 45 minutes down the road so we are strategically placed in a really good spot and we're going to be able to recruit here uh because West Georgia has a beautiful campus, beautiful campus. So like when I got a chance to see all that stuff, it's like, wow, like, man, like head coaching jobs gonna come up, come, 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 come open often, but man, good ones. Shoot. Hey, that's like a diamond in the rough. All right. And they want me. Come on, man. <laughs> hey, you know what I mean? So, you know, for me, it was an easy decision. And I, I tell everybody this, there's three things for me to take a job. I, I, the money that, 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 no. Okay. It's all about, first of all, is my wife happy. Okay. If she's happy, we good. You know, happy spouse, happy house. You already know what time it is, right? <laughs> okay. All right. The next thing is, man, right? I got to be around good people. Okay. All right. Our AD is top notch. Our president's top notch. Hell, our president goes to every new employee orientation. Who does that? Like, he is a people person. You know, like, he is a great leader. And then the next thing was, is this opportunity and potential. And this place, let me tell you what, hey, y'all going to find out in a couple of years. I promise you that. <laughs> okay. Everybody going to know who West Georgia is in a couple of years. So uh, with all those things, um, it, it was, it was, it was a no brainer for me. Uh, it was a no brainer for my wife. Uh, she loved the city of Carrollton. It's, it's such a beautiful city. So, um, but that's why, you know, that's what kind of brought me to this decision to be here, man. I'm so blessed to be here. Coach, with uh, now you said your major was what? Computer science. Coach, you don't just barely get out of high school and, and major in computer science now. That just don't happen. <laughs> yeah, man, I was. I, I call myself a geek. I used to be a geek back in the day, man, and I, I just love that type of stuff. You know, uh, you know, building a computer, taking it apart, things like I, I, I just, I, I just like stuff like that. You know, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just weird, I guess. Are you still in touch with that side of you? Not really. <laughs> not really, not really. You know, it's all ball now, man. It's all ball. If you ask me how to do anything in the computer science world, I I could not tell you. You know, I'm 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 far removed from that. 
but I but I bet you give the film guy and the uh, video crew. I bet you give uh, that 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 editing guy. You, you give them hell, don't you? Hey, 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 no doubt. Hey, I give my coaches I, hell too. If they PowerPoint, if they PowerPoint presentation ain't up the bar, uh, <laughs> you gotta do it again. <laughs> no doubt. Hey, coach, man. With that being said, and you know, uh, Zach's a professional one, man. And I just kind of keep it light, and I play off of Zach, but. Uh, you know, six flags is not too far from you guys either, right? Thirty minutes. Now, are we taking recruiting trips there? Are we are we taking visits there with recruits? I, hey, I don't Blake, know. Hey, why are you trying to damn give all the secrets out? Coach? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. Hey, what's crazy is, coach. Shoot, we got a we got a campus in Douglasville. Okay, so Douglasville is like right on the outskirts of uh, Atlanta. You know, so when you talk about that thirty mile radius now, so we can go a little further too. Hey, I, I, it's right there. You got to use what you got, right? To get hey, what you I'm need. Telling you now. Uh, so I mean, when you take this job, coach, and you know, you hit on it a little bit when you talk about the the coaching profession, the the taking the wrong job could have you erased from the from the business. No doubt. And a startup program uh, that was fairly successful at the division two level. Um, so, I mean, you say in a few years, people are going to know who West Georgia is. You, you're not sneaking up on anybody, coach. I just wanted to let you know that. You're not sneaking up on anybody. But what was there no red flags in, in taking this? Because you know you're not going into a division two situation. You know you are going up. Mm -hmm. And we've seen programs when they go up, it takes them a while to catch their footing. And... And if it doesn't happen right away, you can be looking at a two and 65 type record. Were, were there no red flags in you taking this job? No, it, it, it wasn't. You know, at the end of the day, uh, I think you and I, all right, are all about challenges. We, we want to be challenged. And yes, going up at a, a level, that's a challenge, right? Flipping our roster, yes, that's a challenge, right? But at the end of the day, right? We thrive in challenges, right? So I'm excited about the opportunity. I'm excited to go through this journey. You know, this is going to make me a better coach, you know? So, um, you know, for me, uh, I think there's something that I had to do and it's something that I have to be successful at. You know, I have to, um, you know, just keep it frank. You know, I'm the first African-American head coach here, you know? Um, and at the end of the day, we get but so many opportunities, okay? So, I'm not just doing it just, you know, for me, you know, it's, it's for, you know, the people that are going to be behind me, you know? So, you know, to me, this job is um, a great job. It is, it's a, it's a tremendous opportunity. Uh, it has tremendous potential. Um, I'm just excited, you know, to, you know, first off accumulate talent, right. I'm talking about from my coaches, my players, right. And going out there and going out there and executing and having fun, you know, uh, we want to build something here. That's going to be special. Uh, and I tell our guys all the time, man, right? <clears throat> you have an opportunity to build a legacy here, okay? Right? At the end of the day, as men, we want to build a legacy. At the end of the day, right? And we have an opportunity to do something that's nobody's done before. And let's go out here and be the best at we can be. And, and with that, uh, you know, again, uh, rooting for you. Uh, I don't think I'd ever see you schedule wise, but I'm rooting for you, <laughs> rooting for you until then. Uh, but you know, I had some things I was trying to be professional, like my, uh, like my counterpart and I had some things wrote down and then you kind of took me with your intro. You kind of took me some other places, but, uh, what's your coaching resume? First of all, I don't know. Coach Pew is probably going to hear this. Uh, Coach Pew, you can't tell somebody to come work for you and then not pay them. That's Coach, come volunteer. <laughs> Coach Taylor, I need you to come volunteer. That should have been the conversation. But, you know, uh, I, I, I take pride in hearing your story because I remember my first coaching job in the JC ranks. And when somebody tells you they're making 14, 9, 9, 5, uh, that, that hit home because mine was 15, 5. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, 15, yeah. 5. Uh, so I understand that part, but going forward, coach, at what point, man, I mean, you play for coach Pew, uh, you come back volunteer slash work for coach Pew. Uh, at what point, man, did you sit back or have you sat back and just, you know, appreciated that journey? Because I, I don't know if, uh, 
if a lot of the listeners understand and know the staff that he put together with Coach Napier down in Florida, uh, the head coach of Virginia, uh, Coach Elliott, I don't, I don't think a lot of people understand that. But have you sat back, or or at what point did you sit back and was like, wow, I was a part of all this? It may have been at ground level, but I was a part of all this. And at what point have you appreciated playing and working under Coach Pew? Every day. <laughs> I mean, you, you know, man, like I, I, I guess I tell everybody, man, I, I've been so blessed, man. It's it, it just unbelievable, man. Just how my career has been. You know, I, I know like, you know, everybody strives to, to be at FBS or NFL or whatever it is, man. I, I think the good Lord put me where I was supposed to be. Um, and uh, I, I've learned uh, from not only, you know, Coach Pugh, Willie Jeffries, Fred Goldsmith, Mike Houston, uh, 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 Drew Chronic, like all of those coaches are rock stars, right? And I got a chance to work for them. Like, come on, man. Like, you, you can't, you can't, you can't get any better than that, man. And um, like I said, I, I, I appreciate it every single day, you know, um, you know, I, I pray every day and, you know, I, like I said, it's, it's been truly a blessing and um, I'm very, very fortunate. And for the listeners out there, don't take a job because of money, you know, take a job because of my opportunity. Right. And you have to enjoy the process. And I know it's easy for me to say it. Right. And you to hear it. I, I get it. Right. Hey, like, coach. Like, hey, <laughs> hey, 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 but that's what it's all about. It's about the process. It's about learning. It's about building relationships. It's about networking. It's about all those things that's going to make you into the coach you're going to be. I didn't, I didn't just pop out to be the head coach at West Georgia. That, that, that didn't happen. It was a gradual process, and I had to go through that, okay? I had to go through some trials and tribulations, right? I had to eat, you know, ooze and noodles, right? We had to sacrifice, right? Mm -hmm. We all make sacrifices in what we do, especially in this game of football, okay? The players make sacrifices every single day to play on Saturdays, you know? But it's about the process. During that process, those guys – become better teammates, right? They become, become better leaders, right? But it's the process. It ain't about how much money you're making. It's about being in the right situation, right? Are you around the right people? Are you dang on happy, okay, right? To enjoy what you are doing and you are learning on the way. Mm. And before I send it back to Zach, man, you got to make me a promise that uh, the lower level guy, the lowest guy on your staff, has got to make at least 15, uh, <laughs> 15, one. He's got to at least do that. Hey, uh, no doubt. Got to make more than I did. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, hey, hey, if I, if I don't, I'm just going to continue telling my story. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, man. Well, coach, I, I want to go here with it because I don't think people understand how impressive it was to see you and your staff, you get, you get announced late last year, you come in, you put together a staff, you guys got till February to get a recruiting class together. Your first recruiting class at the division one level ranked 10th <laughs> nationally among FCS programs, number one in your conference, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Yep. Talk me through that process because I don't think people understand how remarkable that is. <sighs> it is man. You know, first off, you know, I, I, I just think, West Georgia, you know, when you're acquiring talent, right? So I'm, you know, it's not just about players, it's about coaches. And uh, you guys probably don't know this, right? So the special teams coordinator that I hired, Alan Tucker, okay, he took a job with Troy, right? So I'm, I'm hiring the right people. My defensive coordinator, Mike Adams, just got hired at Virginia. <laughs> so, like, we're able to- Like acquire, recently? Like recently, yes. Like- yeah. Like recently, so um, you know, so sure. we're able, like you know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, we're doing a good job of you know, you know, you know, identifying talent and bringing it in as far as from coaches and players. Um, but West Georgia is a easy sell; it really is. You know, once we get a kid on campus, let me tell you what—it's hard for him to dang gonna leave without saying yes. All right, um, just, just, just from a, just from a. A uh, uh, city standpoint, got a beautiful city. Campus standpoint, we have a lot of uh, uh, um, variety as far as our uh, degree majors. Um, got beautiful facilities, and we're going to, and, and we're only going to get better. You know, 
And uh, for those guys that that signed with us for transfers to 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 the high school kids, you know, they believe in my vision. OK, and uh, for them, you know, I, I appreciate them. Um, I love them for it. Uh, but we got a great vision here. We got a great staff here. We got great people here. Um, so, like I said, we're going to continue to push this thing. Uh, we're going to try to push it as fast as we can, you know, um, and we're going to see where we go. We're going to see where we go. Uh, but I but I do think everybody will know about West Georgia in a little bit. <laughs> Coach, I mean, you couldn't give those guys uh, six flag tickets to keep the coaches like a summer pass? <laughs> <laughs> summer pass, the six flags to keep you from going to Troy? Hey, I try. So you got to keep that in your back pocket, Coach. I tried, mm. man. I tried, man. But like I said, when you hire good people, you know, I mean, other people know, I mean, they, they're going to get plucked at times, you know, um, and that's what happened. So I'm, I'm super happy for those guys and, um, and extremely proud of them, you know, because, you know, that just tells them how, how good they are, you know. So uh, but but we won't fill those guys. We'll fill those roles. We already, I already filled a special team role. And I think I got a, I, I got a stud. You're going to find out about him a little bit, too. And uh, we're looking for our defensive coordinator right, right now. Uh, right now, I'm the defensive coordinator. We're in spring ball right now, so I'm the defensive coordinator. So it ain't that bad. <laughs> it ain't that bad. I, coach, that's I how it's going to be anyway, Coach. That, that means, no, you know, man. Wink, no. wink, wink, Coach. Wink, no. wink. That's how it's going to be anyway, Coach. I tell, you, um, I tell you this. I tell you this. Like, guys that call plays and become the head coach, you know, like, I, I, I tip my hat off to them, you know. The one thing I want to do is I want to put all my energy into being the best head coach that I can be. Right. I hire good people for a reason. I'm going to let them dang on coach. Right. Now, we're going to collaborate, of course. No, ain't no doubt about it. Right. OK. But I do believe this, man. You hire a guy to do a job. If you don't do a job, hey, man, <laughs> they got to find somebody else to do. It, you know, so uh, I'm not that type of guy. I promise you, I, I'm not. I, I really not. So uh, we're going to collaborate together and hey, let them let them go. Uh, and I, I, lo I love it. Listen, I'll say this. I think we've been I've interviewed a lot of head coaches on this show, you might be the first defensive-minded head coach that has ever said he wasn't calling his defense. Every defensive guy I have on here says, that's my defense. It, yep. it, it's, it's my defense. And so I, I love that you took that approach. I want to ask, this is a big topic, man. I, I hate that we have to talk about it on every interview with the head coach, but it's become such a big part of the sport. Today, the transfer portal opened on April yep. 16th, and me and Coach were talking before we recorded. I think, Coach, you said, what, 3,500 kids right now? hitting the portal, mm -hmm. how do you and your staff plan to balance it? Because at Mercer, or defensively especially, you guys did a really good job of developing young guys from high school. They became All-Americans. Do you and your staff plan to recruit high school first, fill in the holes with the transfer portal, or are you taking a different approach as to head coach at West Georgia? Yeah, so, you know, my, my job originally here is I, I have to do a great job of putting the best roster out. That's my that's my number one job. And uh, – Right now we're we have a D two roster technically, you know. So I got to do uh, the best job I can to get that to a Division one roster. And at the end of the day, you guys know it, man. You know I am judged by wins and losses. At the end of the day, that's what I'm judged by, right? It's not about you know you know graduating percentage, all that. It ain't about that, right? It's about wins and losses. So I got to do a great job of putting together a roster as fast as possible. Okay, so uh, when we first got here, we uh, we were strictly transfer portal as far as in December. Like that's all our focus. That's all we would focus on. We ain't look at not one high school tape. Okay, all right. Once we got our transfers in, which was about fifteen guys, it was all about high school kids. That's what it was all about. Okay, uh, and right now it's all about transfer kids as of right now. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to then go do a great job of first identifying. All right. And then bring those kids in and trying to lock them down. So we're going to probably bring in, I would say, 10 to 15 transfers this cycle as well. Okay. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to flip the roster to make us a division roster and make us more, you know, uh, you know, better, you know, off in the uh in the season. Um, but we I want to be a high school first. That's what I want to be. Okay. The transfer portal has allowed us to then go and flip rosters a little bit faster but you have to bring the right guys in. Okay. That's the one thing that I'm proud about. Okay. With that, you know, that the 10th ranking class, whatever, we didn't go into it like, Hey, we want to get the highest ranking class. We didn't go into it that way. We went into it like, Hey, we want to bring the right kids in. If they, if they ain't bought our culture, right. Cause I ain't no used car salesman. I give it to them straight up and raw. Okay. You don't like it, hit the bricks. You know what I mean? But, <laughs> um, but, uh, but we're going to, 
uh, we're going to we, we, we want to be a developmental team uh, here. And, we, and I, I, you know, when I talk about developmental, that's I, I talk about it as a box. Right. You got you got you got a box. You got four, you know, four sides to a box, man. We want to, you know, yeah, we're going to you know, go in athletically. Right. We're going to, you know, you know, put you there. Right. We're going to go athlete. I mean, um, academically. Right. We're going to go spiritually. We're going to go socially. Right. We're going to try to build that box and develop those young men uh, to be better men when they leave here, but also good football players. So, um, but I want to be a developmental team. Uh, that's where we're going to be. We'll fill some holes in if we need to in the transfer portal. We got to go a little heavy this time, right? But hey, we're going to be a strictly high school because I'll be honest, man, you know, when you look at it, you know, hey, we actually are bordering state too now. Uh, that's what I mean by bordering state. You know, any state that touches Georgia, all right, we get in-state tuition, you know? So, you know, we got a fertile recruiting land here. All right. We, we can recruit every state in the Southeast. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to be able to, you know, bring in some dang on talent. All right. But we got to be able to do a great job of developing that talent. Um, and that's because of the transfer portal, too. Right. If a kid leaves, another kid got to step up immediately. So that's how we're going to do it here. That rule is so helpful for you guys, because I listen, I'm from Alabama. I play seven day football at Baker down in Mobile. We have some of the best talent in Alabama, too. You get to border Alabama. South Carolina is underrated. You're already in Georgia, who I think is number one. And then yep. Coach next to me is a Florida boy, so he's going to tell you Florida's number one. So, I mean, that's a pretty good set of states you can recruit. Tennessee, too, if I'm yep. not mistaken, and, as and well. And North Carolina. <laughs> Gosh, that's just insane. But, Coach, I got two more, but I'm going to toss it to Coach. Let's let, get his last few out. Um. So, since we uh, we're talking within the program, uh going d2 going from d2 to one double a and i'm assuming you know the president everybody under him is is full steam ahead but have they grown your department enough because there are rule changes uh within to assist you to where you're not having to wear seven hats your assistant coaches aren't having to wear six hats uh and making sure that the process turns over quickly because like you said at the end of the day we're judged off wins and losses you can have a team full of valid victorians and go two and ten and you're gonna see the sale signs popping up in your yard mm -hmm. uh the inner working have have they worked with you on that have, has that grown uh to help you if that, if that makes sense yeah it's, it's it's definitely a process um we got some things that are laid out uh, the one thing is you can't come in and all of a sudden, boom, it happens. You know what I mean? So we understand it's a process. We understand uh, what we need. Uh, like I said, my AD and his team has been, you know, tremendous. Um, he wants to do everything in a first class manner. Uh, you know, we, so we're going to be a lead in that. Uh, so, uh, so to answer your question, yes, we're building it out now. Yes. And the other dreaded question, and I'm only going here because Zach went, went there kind of, uh you hit on it there's a lot of options a lot of opportunities for these kids um for me and i can speak for me in our program uh when the number one conversation from the recruit from their 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 surrounding support system is about money that that pretty much cuts that for us so with that being said where you are have you know, you guys making a jump from D2 to FCS. Have you guys talked about the NIL, the collectives, the booster clubs and things like that to help? Because, again, you can give out all the six flag summer passes you want. But at the end of the day, if and I'll just use them because they're up the street, Georgia Tech comes in and says, hey, we're going to give your starter uh, starting quarterback 25 cash. He's probably gone. He He's probably gone in this day and age. Yes. Have you guys talked about that as well? Because that's a that's a factor that is becoming a bit bigger factor, even at our level. Yeah, I, I, and, I, and this is uh, this can be a whole different conversation as far as a long conversation. Um, <laughs> you know, when you talk about that type of stuff. Uh, yes, uh, we have talked about NIL, collective uh, cost of attendance, all those type of things to help our student athletes. Um, I'm going to tell you where I stand on it. And, you know, some people may agree with it. Some people may not. Okay. I think, you know, with the NIL, I agree with it. I want kids to get paid. There ain't no doubt about it. Okay. But where I have a problem with that is I have a problem with collectives. Okay. Um, for me, what have you done for me? What have you done for West Georgia? 
Okay. All right. So like you, you might've been a four or five star. I don't care. What have you done for West Georgia to get that money? So, you know, me just giving kids money. I'm not in on that. I'm not in on that, you know? So, uh, but if a kid earns it, give it to him. Right. And one of the things that, you know, that we preach and we, and we can kind of talk about our culture, you know, and we try to define our culture as connecting people here. Um, it's not only connecting each other on, on, on the team, it's connecting the campus and connecting the community, right? Because when you then go and serve and invest in, in people, they're going to turn around and they're going to invest in you. They're going to serve you. So, you know, you got to go out there and earn it, right? You're a good football player. You go out there and they're going to serve at the soup kitchen, right? You go out there and pick up they're going to track. You go out there, right? And people see that, right? And they want to now be associated with you, right? That's how you go out and get an NIL, in my opinion, you, you know what I mean? So, right, you know, right. to me, you know, to me, like I said, I want kids to get paid, you know, but at the end of the day, man, if you ain't getting up in West Georgia, hey, cuz, hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. Now, I agree with you. I agree That's with you. Uh, because I think at, at uh, face value, that can create issues within, uh, your, team. within your team. Yes, no exactly. Um, and then my last question before I turn it back to, uh, back to Zach, as I, uh, I I looked at the picture, uh, you pick out the uniform, the the, the introductory setup, or was that all the white? Uh, that was me. <laughs> okay, you know I'm lying. Nah, that's... I was gonna say, did we need to get her on the line? <laughs> <laughs> but nah, you know the wife, she has truly do domesticated me and dressed me, so that's uh, I, I give that all to her. <laughs> oh man. Well well, Coach, man, to, to, to wrap this thing up, man, I, I know you're still in spring ball, so you probably got a lot going on. Your spring game is scheduled for Saturday, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Yep, yep. Um, what's been your takeaway from your first spring practice at West Georgia? Have you guys achieved everything you want to accomplish? Or, or like, really, what are the goals that you're looking for when you all get to Saturday? I'll be honest, man. You know, my goal every day is to be better every day. You know, like, you know, I don't know, you know, I don't know how you judge that on Saturday. You know what I mean? Like, Brian. as long as we can, hey, as long as we, you know, because we had our last scrimmage, as long as we're better than that last scrimmage, I, I'm good. That is the goal, right? We got to continue to get better. Uh, but we got to continue to grow, right, as a team. We got to continue to build a foundation here. Um, you know, one of the things that that's a little bit different for our young men, you know, um, you know, being D2, going to D1, is a lot of our young men at D2s, man, they got other jobs, right? They're trying to pay for school. Uh, yeah. You know, that's some of the things that you don't think about, right? Uh, these guys don't have, you know, full meal plans. You know what I mean? So, like, um, that's a huge difference uh, uh, that 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 they are working through, right? Um, to me, what we're doing is the norm. To them, it's like, whoa, like, you just added another layer on this thing, you know? So that's something that I think a lot of people don't understand, going from Division two to Division one. They just think... Boom, it just happens. No, no, like it, it is a different, different deal for our young people. Uh, but like I said, how I just success is getting better every day and being consistent. You know, uh, we don't want to day gonna have a good practice and have a bad practice. You know, we, we don't want to do that, right? We want to be consistent uh with that. And uh, we gotta do a great job as coaches of building that, building the foundation, right, and fighting through these adverse situations. Um, you know, but spring for us has been really, really good. It, it, it has, you know, it is, it's, you know, I, you know, uh, you take this with a grain of salt. I just feel like, you know, we actually a little bit ahead than we were at Mercer in a sense, you know, just, okay. you know, these kids, you know, you know they, they love football. Um, you know, uh, they, they, you know, you know, they have some solid players here, you know, so like, you know, we're a little bit, we're a little bit ahead of the curve than I expected. Um, and I think our coaching staff has done a really nice job of, uh, you know, coaching these kids. Because, like, when you go out of our practice, you won't be like, oh, man, like, this, this, not, this, not, a, this not a first year practice. Like, our guys are going to hit it. They moving it. Sense of urgency, uh, and, uh, intentional about what they're doing, uh, organized, you know. So, um, so for me, I, I'm, I'm proud of that, you know. But we got a long way to go. I can tell you that. We got a long way to go. The last question and a half, what is your message – or I guess expectation that you're setting for your team year one coming from D2 to FCS. What are you telling you got your guys that like, what, what's the, every coach has a saying for the season. I know coach Fred 
you guys have uh gas gas you guys have a bunch of sayings what's the what is west georgia's motto this year what's the expectation you're setting for your team uh our motto is, is, is attack okay attack everything that we do right you get up in the morning <laughs> hey you attack the day right so if you go in class you attack it you know because at the end of the day you know we want guys that are competitive right we want guys that compete right but i just don't want guys that just compete on the field i want guys that are going to compete in life <laughs> you know what i mean it's no different when you go in that classroom right you got 25 people in that class all of you are trying to get the same job, basically. You know what I mean? So, like, you, you got to you got to dang go and work in the classroom as well. Uh, but but our um, our motto is, is is attack. Our our brand is attack, and um, all that means is you know we break it up in acronyms. Uh, you know, so we talk about uh, uh, attitude. Uh, we talk about uh, teamwork. Um, we talk about Lord. I don't I don't, I don't dang on forgot my other dang on T. Um, <laughs> Jesus, uh, A is accountability, C is culture, um, and uh, K is um, is, is knowledge, and um, oh, I'm oh, sorry, the other T was toughness. So that's 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 what we that's what we kind of you know talk about you know each and every day. That's what we want today gonna be. And if we do that right, if we do that, if we attack every day, right, I can't tell you how many games you want to win, but you're gonna become a better man. You become a better player. I can guarantee you that. I love it, man. The last little half question, a quick one. I'm I'm planning on being there. I think that's going to be the week one game I go to. I, I'd like to travel every single week, and I want to go to y'all's home opener, the first game Can't against awesome. Sanford opening up. Talk to me about the emotion you're going to be feeling coming out of that tunnel. Not just your first game at West <laughs> Georgia, but your first game as a head coach at, at, at the Division One level, man. Yeah, yeah. It, it'll be some nerves. You know, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't, right? Hey, it's just a football game. Well, yeah. well it's not. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not. <laughs> You know what I mean? But I think after that uh, first kickoff, man, it's, it's going to be rock and roll, and there'll be a lot of emotions. Um, there's no doubt about it. Uh, but at the end of the day, man, you got to be able to control your emotions. There's no different, you know, you talk to the kids. You got to control your emotions, um, and uh, you got to prepare, right? Uh, the, the best you prepare, you know, the better you're going to feel. Um, so it's going to be good, man, and uh, going against a similar uh, – not similar, but, you know, I've gone against um, Hatch, you know, for – for at least nine years i was five <laughs> i was five at citadel and and four at um at uh at uh at mercer so um so it's a familiar face right but let me tell you what they good now like yeah. he, he does a good job man um and i got all the respect for him man so it'll definitely be a battle right there my guy Hatch always finds – I don't know where they find quarterbacks, man. I swear <laughs> Sanford has like a little garage of quarterbacks somewhere. Every year he loses a quarterback and every, all the media is like, is Sanford going to be good because Sanford passed the ball? And I'm like, if Chris Hatcher's the head coach, they're going to throw the football. Do not worry about <laughs> quarterbacks with Sanford. But, Coach, I just want to say – I, I know I speak for Coach Fred as well. Thank you so much, man, for – 45 minutes during spring practice during your first year on a Tuesday, man, for you to give us this much time. I, I want to thank you, man. I, I, this was one of the best interviews we've had, man. You were open with us. You, yeah, I'm mean, just thank you so much for, for all your time, man. And anything you want to say to the people, man, this time is yours. No, nah, nah, I appreciate you guys, you know, wanting to, you know, interview me. Uh, this is awesome. Uh, but this is another chance to just get West Georgia out there, you know, at the end of the day. Uh, West Georgia is a tremendous institution. Uh, we have a tremendous program here, and I, I'm so excited uh, for the future of West Georgia. Guys, make sure to go follow Coach Taylor on all social media, man. You already know where you can find myself and Coach Fred. But until next time on the Coach's Corner, for Coach Joel Taylor, for Coach Fred, for myself, for the Blue Buzz, man, we are out.